Hey, everybody, are you ready to be fired up? Because I sure am. I have got the marketing dude here, Mike Quibbett, and we just can't wait to interview him. You want to know about marketing for your real estate or lending business? He's the guy. How you doing, Mike? Hi, Krista. How are you? I'm Thanks good. for having me. Yeah, I know you're busy. It took us about like 20 minutes to get on the call today. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's actually like 24 minutes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just what happens when you put a couple of D personalities on the same uh <laughs> in the same Zoom room, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, but we made it and we are super excited to be here. So, if you are looking for marketing strategies that are different, that are cutting edge and help you stand out as the authority figure in your space, then this is the show for you. Awesome. Okay, Mike, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, um, we create content mainly in the form of video and website content for real estate agents without necessarily having to bore people with a bunch of interest rates, turn back the clock emails or anything else that sort of makes people cringe. Gotcha. So explain what you mean by that. Kind of tell me, you know, you're, you're starting. So, yeah, so... Um, we started this, uh, basically it's always the way I practiced when I was still in sales, when I was still selling myself. Uh, I used to be an agent in Chicago. Um, fast forward to today is about two and a half years ago, I moved out to San Diego and started what is now called the real estate marketing dude. And, uh, I always had the problem where I loved, like, I liked the real estate business, but I hated talking about it. I hated having to like, but you have to do it, right? You have to like, if you don't, if you don't market your database, someone else is. So it's like, what the hell do you talk about? So, um, we started creating hyper local media. Um, and we always, I was more of a giant game of attention. So we created content that reminds our database, what we do for a living without hitting them over the head with our lockbox. Um, and that could be hyper local community videos, case studies, business interviews, uh, real estate content, if you like, but it, there's no shortage of it to create. What we found was that as long as you just constantly remind your database what you do for a living, you naturally attract business. And the same exact business model that I use with real estate marketing dude is exactly the same process I use in my real estate business. Um, it's the same thing. You create content, make it authentic, make it count, and uh, put it in front of your ideal customer and people attract. I feel like we're absolutely... We, we are coaching the and teaching the exact same thing. That's all we teach is like hyper local, make it, you know, speak to your client avatar uh, as much as you can. Anything community or real estate related, you're the go-to person so that you become the authority figure. Yeah. And it's amazing just what happens to your business when you do this consistently, because the, even the amount of referrals, like we just find skyrockets because people are reminded that you're actually in the business. Totally. And that the whole, um, this is what drives me nuts with a lot of like, I'm in a lot of Facebook groups, lab coats, real closers, all these groups, and you see um, 90% of the conversation talking about shiny objects, lead generation. But the 2019 stats just came out, and they overwhelmingly, just like they have the previous 100 years they've been counting them, all show that roughly over 80% of your business comes from referrals, repeat business, or people you've personally met, either in front of your house, your open house, or your signage. And it's like, why aren't we putting the majority of the conversation on generating more referrals? And uh, you don't get referrals from strangers. You get them from the people you know. So um, it's pretty simple. We farm relationships with video content and we become unforgettable. Um, and that's how we attract. I love that. So basically, you, so you, I know you, is, is the software that you sell? Does it do this or is that completely different? So we have a software company too coming out. Uh, it's called Sweet Assist. Um, inside of Sweet Assist, there's a, call it a farming system for your database, which just involves... Um, what we believe in is really like the three model. I'll call it the Bed Bath & Beyond marketing plan. So this is something that everyone can relate to. Um, we all have these 20% off kitchen coupons sitting in our drawers right now at home. And we're like, what the hell are these for, right? 20% off. But we save them for whatever reason. That's just direct mail. But when we go to Bed Bath & Beyond, no one actually brings the freaking coupon with them. We scan our email for the exact same thing. Email is just a second channel. And then when we leave Bed Bath & Beyond, those towels start falling around all over the internet. My point is, is that Bed Bath & Beyond farms their past customers the same way that we farm our entire database because they understand that you'll drive more sales, like what you just said prior, you drive more sales staying in front of the people you already know than trying to acquire new ones. Mm -hmm. And in real estate, it's, like, it's the exact same thing. Zillow is expensive to buy business. The money in Zillow leads is not in the actual transaction, it's in the referrals and the repeat business you get after that transaction because it costs you X amount of money to bring in. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. So um, it's just, you just, that's how you build a brand. I mean, consistent communication to the same audience over time, period. And when you become unforgettable, people are going to use someone they know, like, and trust. It's just the way our business is. It's so funny. I have something called the, the, the um, eight C's. If you commit to consistently producing content, you're going to convert because you're more likely to make a connection. If you continue to do this full sales cycle over and over, you have a complete sales cycle. And that's the thing that people don't understand is consistently producing content. You're inadvertently nurturing your leads constantly, right? And Totally. Lead generation is so simple. That's it's easy. We all have Facebook, we run ads, not a problem. But the nurturing process is the difficult part. So when you utilize this strategy, it become it no longer becomes difficult. Yeah, it's it's a giant game of attention. Right. Yeah. Like here's a like it was like 80% of buyers forget their agent's name after six months. Um, you can't work in a referral dominated business that way. I mean, you can, but you're not going to last long. That's why the failure rate is so damn high in this industry. Yeah. It's because we're taught to go chase a bunch of leads. And the truth is, is that most of us are human. Like we bleed. You have to be a freaking robot to prospect five days a week, seven days a week. It's exhausting. Yeah. Like who likes to get on the call phone and cold call? And that's Nobody. Like, most of these companies are always teaching cold calling, door knocking, just do open houses, like do all this same stuff that they've been teaching over and over again for years and years and centuries because they didn't have this wonderful thing called the internet, social media, video. Now that we have that, we've really got to start changing our mindset and the way that we're dealing with our ideal client, right? Yep. And I think that's something that's really important for people to understand. I love that you, you teach that. So you're just constantly being in the face without being, you know, super salesy, um, yep. in the, the eye of your consumer so they can't forget about you. Correct. Um, but we take a, a little bit of a twist on it is also, um, there's no shortage of content to create, right? Um, anything that we do on a hyper local level, like even if it's a business owner interview reminds people we're in real estate, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it unless you're a complete total loser and you have nothing better to do with your life, except create business owner interviews but they would probably still assume you're in real estate on it. Right. Yeah. But each of these videos all have different strategies um, for it, regardless of what type of content you're going to try to create. There's like seven, eight different types of video scripts we create uh, mostly, but um, they're all used primarily to nurture your SOI first and then secondarily multi-purpose for additional legion and further brand building mm -hmm. things like optimizing on YouTube, right. For ranking. Um, put it on your website and writing a blog post so that you actually have content on your site. You're not like that agent that is never doesn't have any content, which means you don't really have a business. Yeah. Content is business. Like constant content today. I, I think that, and, and I, I'm sure you agree with me on this, but every one of us are forced to create content. Content is the only way that we stay on top of mind because if not, we're just selling something. Absolutely. And gosh, it's like, I was talking when you produce one video You've got like seven or eight uses. Create a video, then you send the video to Red. You get it transcribed. You do a long form uh, post on Facebook. You create an ad on Facebook. You send the video to YouTube. Then you put the video on your blog as a written post, as a video post. You put it on Instagram. I mean, and then you take the video and you insert it into your CRM as a part of your, you know, updating and then do an email newsletter. That's like what nine different usages for one video right there. Yep. Most people though, as you know, like they're just like, they'll put a, they'll get a video. Like I see agents will get a video. They'll spend the four or 500 bucks to get someone to come out and do it. It's done half fast, but they'll just let it die in a newsfeed and great. Like at least you're getting on video, but squeeze every bit of energy out of that thing because like, just don't do it to put in your newsfeed. Like these videos live forever. Mm -hmm. And like for anyone that is, um, if you're not using the content you're creating and put on your website, you're missing the point. That's something I like I like to tell people like would you ever have you ever bought a vacation on Travelocity or Expedia or one of these sites and press the buy button without first reading the reviews? No. Most people don't because you 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 need to confirm that decision. So the question I always ask realtors is uh would you hire you if you visited your site? You Most of them say that. hell no. Well that's what content does. The videos connect, the written content is what converts. And it's important that you have content on your site because when people, you know, people look at your website, they don't look to see if you sell real estate. They look to see if they like you or if they can trust you. Well, not only that, but whenever you, what you can understand is when you post content on your website and you post content on YouTube, that gives you higher search engine optimization because then you're now ranking on Google, 
right? Yep. So um, producing video content is great, but if you don't know how to properly distribute the video and distribute the content, you're again, you're missing the boat. It's not just about totally. producing video. I see this people, they're like, all oh, these great video superstars and they're doing everything. But if you go Google them, or you look on the YouTube, you, they don't show up. It's because they're not properly distributing it. That's a huge, huge aspect of making sure that you're getting your, your biggest bang for your buck or you're even showing up at all. And it's getting more difficult and more difficult to actually get the eyes of the consumer because we are we have a, an attention span of a goldfish and now we're competing for more, more, we're competing for more eyes because there's so many people that are starting to market. Yep. Well, there's a, uh, we did a, um, a show and I the other day with uh, let me give you an example. Um, we started talking about brand. Like I, I think it was a agent in South Florida, sixty three thousand realtors in South Florida, sixty three thousand. So it's like, what the hell are you doing to sort of stand out? Because most the general public, whether we want to admit it or not, believe we're a commodity. Absolutely. And if you guys don't believe me, for your listeners, and that's the reason why every single year one of us loses that one deal to little cousin Billy who just got his damn license yeah. or. Aunt Susie, because she's freaking just got her license. Well, you know why that is, is because blood is thicker than water. If the consumers truly knew that little cousin Billy was going to make a bad fucking investment for them, I'm sorry, they wouldn't use him. They just think he's going to do the same service as us. Uh, uh, well, they all, and here's the thing. So here's what I always tell everybody. And this thing, tell me if you're not, Mike. Sure. So I'm an expert in real estate. I've sold, you know, just around 2000 homes personally. Okay, so I'm a, I'm an expert. I know real estate and marketing at the back of my hand, but if my community does not see me as an authority figure, whether I'm an expert or not, it makes no difference at all. You have to position yourself as the authority figure, right? So that you can actually say what your value proposition is, why they should hire you over, over Redfin. Excuse my friend, if you're from Redfin, yeah. why they should hire you over the, you know, the, the, these, um, these, uh, buyers that are just buying houses that I've never seen, or now Zillow is doing that. I mean, it's, you know, right. We've got to show people why they want and should hire us. What makes us different? Why are we different than everybody else? Totally. And then, well, let's talk about that. Cause that's a good point. Um, um, I had a show yesterday and we were, we were talking about this, like the focus, like if you're going to create content, like what's the focus going to be? It's not just about creating a video to check a box to say you did it. Because let's be honest, the other half of the market is doing that. The video thing's coming in. you got these influencers like, get on video, get on video. But everyone's problem is like, what do I say? How do I say it? Oh, my God, I look fat. Oh, my God, that is really boring. So then we talk ourselves out of it. We don't do any of it. And we end up at square one, right? So um, you have to create content. It's hard to create content consistently unless you know what your brand is. And you know what your story is, what you stand for. So for me, for an example, you know, this is how I talk normally. I asked Chris, I was like, Chris, I'm going to do my best not to swear on your show. <laughs> if you ever guys go on my show, it's just F-bomb every 10 minutes. It's just the way I talk, all right? It's not trying to put on a show or anything. It's just who I am. But my point is, is that's part of my brand. Um, when I was selling real estate in Chicago, I was a Chicago real estate dude. I completely got up, moved across the country, and I became the real estate marketing dude. Even though what I sell has changed 100%, my brand has not because I'm still a dude. If you put me in a kitchen and forced me to cook, I would be the cooking dude. If you made me play workout, I would be the fit dude. It doesn't matter what it is because I'm a dude. And your brand is nothing more than just a one sentence or syllable or adjective that describes what other people would think of you. And that's so right. You see, people think of your brand as your business card, your colors. No, your brand Ooh. is like, who are you trying to come up with? What image and what feelings do you want people to provoke? Who are you trying to attract? Who do you want to work with? Right? That's, yeah. It's so much bigger than that. And that's like the very first part of it. You have to start there. No mm -hmm. doubt. Absolutely. It's funny. Today I just had a coaching call and I did a whole strategy teaching my students. Okay. How do you create, let me show you create content for a week. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry for a, for a month, like really, really simply. And the first thing is what's your mission? Who are you trying to like, what do you, who do you want to accomplish? And you know, who is, who are your people? Who are you trying to attract? What's your niche, right? You want right. to have buyers, sellers, and what's your niche with it within that market? And then now what kind of content are we going to actually, you know, produce to actually make them want to watch it? What questions are we going to answer? How are we going to move them away um, from pain and more towards pleasure, right? How are we going to totally. speak their language? Well, most times, so here's what I, I realized. Um, because I remember when I decided to brand into Chicago real estate, dude, I might've been one of the first people to do it with a cartoon. And everyone in the time in the city, like I worked downtown Chicago. So it was, you know, it was more, uh, 400, 500,000 and above. 
people are like, Mike, you're crazy. Why you're going to go out there with a cartoon and call yourself the dude. I'm like, fuck yeah, I am. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and do that because I don't care. And honestly, what I ended up finding was I started attracting people just like me. Like they would bro me. What's up, dude? Like that's how the calls come in off the internet, which meant that they were connected. They, and trust me, a lot of people didn't like it, but that's fine. Right. We're not supposed, God didn't make us to resonate with every single person. Right. That's not how we're wired. No, no one's perfect. You're not God. So quit trying to be. So when you look at marketing and you do that, you a- end up actually resonating a lot uh, with a lot more people. And if you don't believe me, go look at your last 10 clients. The reason they all became beer drinking buddies or gal drinking wine pals, you're getting Maddie's and Patty's together now is because you attract like people. It's not done on accident. It's not a coincidence. It's just how it is. And, especially, and it makes your job easier when you start attracting people that, that, are, that want to work with you. And that's just the coolest thing about, about video, right? When you, again, properly distribute it, is yeah. that you're attracting the people that are more likely to want to work with you and be easier customers. And you're detracting the ones that are not going to, they're not going to flow with you. And so totally. some people are afraid, even when, let's just take this step further, they're afraid of niching, right? Oh my God, if I niche, I'm going to lose out on all this business. No, you're still going to get all that business you would have normally gotten. You're just going to attract the people that are looking for that specific type of thing that yep. you're continuing to produce content about, right? So when they go and Google, hey, buying a foreclosure, and if you specialize in foreclosures and you're producing content, then you're going to show up when they do their search, if you distribute it right. <laughs> well, it, like let's... Let's just put it in their own shoes so they really get it. So all you people are on the treadmill right now, running on your treadmill, listen to this podcast. Literally, um, think about how you make your own purchasing decisions. And I want you to look at the financial planning industry. Um, do you invest your money with the, in, the individual who is completely opposite than you? Like, I'm investing my money with the guy who's going to have a couple beers with me over at the bar. That's just who I would have more comfortable with because that's just who I am. I'm a dude, right? I need to feel that connection for me to make a purchasing decision. So it's no different um, than in any agent's position, but I think you're right. I think you have to niche down. You have to. You cannot be a generalist because you resonate with none and jack of all trades resonates with zero. So like, let's give them some examples. Like if you're a mom, be the best mom realtor in the world. Absolutely. Make it everyone know. Call yourself the real estate mama. It's my favorite brand name ever. Yeah. Um, just own it. If if you're a, a bodybuilder, then great. Be a fit, the most fit realtor ever. If you give back, great. Then you're a giver. Serve others first. But regardless of what you stand for, you have to understand what you stand for. And you create content around that. Absolutely. And it's been proven that the more that content speaks the language of somebody, the more likely they're going to raise their hand and say, choose me. Like, let me give you an example. I'm 48 years old, probably getting ready to go through menopause. Sometimes I get a little, you know, night sweats. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm clicking. I'm not looking at, hey, well, thinking about getting married. No, totally different subject matter. But when somebody says night sweats, I'm like, holy crap, you can help me with that. Yeah, I'm buying that. It's the exact same. Well, thing with your you just did it. You just did it. So like, look at, this is why, so I've seen Krista before, this is the first time we've met face to face, right? Krista's authenticity comes across in her ads because you keep fucking retargeting me everywhere. All right, so stop it. No, I'm joking. And you guys are all being retargeted too, but she follows me around Facebook and the internet and all this stuff. And you always have a lot of engagement on your stuff. Now you don't do that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sure that your students, the people who buy your stuff and the ones that join your coaching club, are attracted to you as an individual person. They respect you. They feel like they can relate to you because you, what you just said, not too many women will come out and say, I'm 48. I'm probably menopausal, but that's real. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's real. And that authenticity is just part of your personality. And you're not scared to scream it from the rooftops. The yeah. question is, is what's that for you guys? It's, just, it's so true. And don't try to be like somebody else. Be who you are. Many times people will try to be like somebody else or I always hear, well, I'm not as energetic as you, Krista. Well, good, because I detract a lot of people because I am so energetic. I mean, I, totally. I lost a listening before because they're like, you know, we like you, but you're just a little bit too hyper for us. And my mom is like 85. You're going to scare her. I feel like breathing down her neck. Get out of here. I got a showing, woman. Get out of here. Beat it. <laughs> Um, I love that. So tell us a little bit about more, a little bit about your software that you have. The software we have. All right. So it's a, uh, all in one, it's a transaction management, uh, solutions meant for brokerages and teams. 
but it's more of a resource center. It's not a software. It's not, it doesn't generate leads. It's not, there's a plenty of lead generations out there. So we're not trying to recreate the wheel, but it farms your database. So it farm, we could automate direct mail um, to your database. Uh, it's got a video email system to your database. Uh, so you could automate email, direct mail, um, people whom we're doing their videos for, we're obviously hitting their social for them on that. But it's also a gift giving center, a training university. It's a membership community. It's a whole lot of stuff. But the only thing that um, basically it's one spot that you could build your brand, whether you're gifting people brownies or you're going to send them birthday reminders or automate direct mail to them. It just makes it simple to farm your most important asset. And that's the people you know. And what's the name of it again? Because you said it kind of fast last time. I want to. It's, it's called uh, Sweet Assist is going to be the brokerage facing version. That would be for teams and brokerages. Sweet. And as that'll be I sweet mean. as in like, yeah, like ice cream sweet. And our logo is a popsicle. Oh, sweet. Like S-W-E-E-T. Sweet. Like sweet. Okay. Sweet. (laughs) Okay, great. So that's something that you can look into for trainings. And that's a great resource for you as an an agent or a lender to look into to help you, you know, stay top of mind awareness and do it in an easy way. Now let's talk a little bit real quickly. I know I'm kind of jumping all over the place. That's my personality. Sorry about, you mentioned this. Um, People are afraid of doing video. Like I heard the same thing. I'm too fat. I look, I'm too old. My nose is big. I don't like my voice. And I always say, well, that's what you look like. So we got to love ourselves, Right. But what, you know, I I have my strategies on how I teach people how to, how to look more comfortable on video. Give me some of your ideas and strategies. Sure. Uh, it all starts by identifying the brand first. Uh, it's impossible to determine what type of content you can create without knowing what your brand story is. So, um, I'll give you the Nike version and I'll go into the uh, real estate side. So we're doing what Nike does. Nike doesn't have to showcase their products and services in any of their marketing. Instead, they put the swoosh right next to Michael Jordan's story, Tiger Woods' story, and all these other famous athletes. Therefore, we start associating them through association that, wow, they must be an athletic brand. So if uh, your theme is, I'll give you a couple examples. If your theme is a mom, then maybe your content strategy is that you're doing business owner interviews, but of kid-friendly restaurants kid-friendly breweries. Maybe um, you're doing points of interest of places that you could have. Like one of our clients did a uh, ostrich farm. She did her kid's birthday party there. That's a point of interest um, type video. Um, Basically, you have to create kid-friendly stuff. Beaches with changing stations. Everything you do should be spoken to like a mom because that's what a mom does. Um, If you're a military guy, we have a military guy. 95% of his business is catered towards the vets in San Diego. So he has a media series called the San Diego Salute, and he'll do business owner interviews, but specifically veteran-owned businesses or businesses that give back to the community. If he does a neighborhood tour, it's always in respect to vicinity to base. If he's doing real estate content, it's in the form of a boot camp. And if you don't listen to him, he'll be your drill sergeant. You'll drop and give him 20. Gotcha. I love it. Yeah. So So, all about finding the voice. Like mine's a dude, right? Mm -hmm. So I could just do it out whatever the hell I want. But it, I'm, I'm just being me. I'm not a dude. <laughs> it, everyone has one. That's the thing is that all of us have a brand. I'll give you a really cool story. Um, this is someone that she listens to our show. So if she hears this, uh, this is a touching one. So we have an agent that we're doing a brand with. Um, now we gave her, uh, we created a show series for her, but what we did was determine what her brand was. This is somebody that for the last 15 years was sick and couldn't get out of bed because they had a metal plate in their neck. For some reason, in the last four years, she started to get out of it. She could actually get back to work. Um, she only likes doing two things in life. Uh, one is working out, and the other two is volunteering. That's it. So we came up with a program for her where she is now going to give back 10% of her commissions to the four charities that she spends all her free time with anyways. The name of her series is called Live to Give. The name of her... We basically started a whole... Uh, call it a charity. <laughs> it's called live to give, but it show it demonstrates exactly what she's all about. So yeah. she sells houses to save lives and give back to the shelter. And that becomes the story. Now think about all of the different, I, like, I hate when agents say just listed, just sold. I like saying, Hey, another life just saved. Here's how. Nice. Yeah. So it's all storytelling, but she wants to build her brand as the most charitable realtor in her marketplace, which is in Sarasota. So great. If you want to do that, then you go ahead and tell a bunch of charity stories. I want to focus on businesses that give back to the community. I want to focus on points of interest that were donated by some family that made a statue there. 
I want to talk about case studies where, you know, now she's focusing on the money she's, a, she's raising for awareness for her closings as opposed to how much she made. She's accomplishing the same thing, but she's doing it in a very charitable way. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I love it. I so love there's it. so much. It's, once, you, once you do, there's so much content and it becomes unlimited because all you do is you speak through your voice. You speak through your brand. And then you enjoy it by the, while you're doing it too. That's where, that's where the authenticity comes in. 100%. You have to be into it. Otherwise, um, no one's going to force anyone to go out and shoot videos. You have to be, you have to be excited about what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and, and remember it can be learned. Like it, there, I don't think out of, if you interview a hundred people and I, and I, and I have out of a hundred people, maybe two are going to be like, yeah, I like doing video. Everyone is like, I am petrified of it. They, it's like the biggest mental mind screw ever getting yourself out of it. But understand that anybody, no matter what age, um, what, you know, how you look, how you feel, what size, what shape, what nationality, anyone can learn to, it's, it's a skill, just like riding a bike, just like kissing, right? You can, you know, the first time I kissed boy, I, I bit his lip, but I still, <laughs> I did. I was in junior high. They you got to start somewhere. I know. Yeah, I, imagine being called bitey when you're in junior high. It pretty much sucked, right? Like, well, here, pretty, oh, great, you know. But my point is, I still kiss and I learned how. It's just like video. It just takes practice and getting used to it. So it is. Well, here's, here's the thing, too, is you guys remember, no one has to see the video if you don't want them to. Absolutely. So what are you so what are you so nervous about during the filming of it? That's what I that's what always gets me. It's like if you don't like the video, you're the only one who's going to put it in your news feed. Like, I'm not going to like it's not just suddenly appear there. So therefore, don't be worried about what you're going to say. Here's a, here's a key. 10 per only like people only retain 10% of the content that comes out of your mouth, guys. Mm -hmm. That's mathematical fact. So that means 90% of the stuff coming out of your mouth, no one's going to retain anyways. So why the hell do you care what the hell's coming out of your mouth? It doesn't fucking matter. Sorry. Um, But 90% of the communication is based upon the tonality and the body language you're using. That's why video is such a powerful brand building tool. You cannot do that with a text. You cannot do that just through, just through voice. Absolutely. And when you show up after you, someone's seen you on video, I mean, I can't tell you everywhere I go, people are hugging me. I mean, people know me, right? at least they think they do. My kids are always like, who is that mom? I'm like, I have no clue. But because they <laughs> developed a relationship with yeah. me, Grant Wise told me um, yeah. about something called a parasocial relationship. Right? I was just going to mention that. He told me that too. And I meant to write a blog post on it. I haven't got there yet, right. but you're exactly right. No, it turns you into celebrity. So, so parasocial relationship is something that we've been programmed as children because of watching the boob tube, right? To see that people that we see on the other side of that screen as an authority figure and as a local, as a celebrity. And it's like, we're literally, our brains have been programmed to think that. So imagine if you start doing this on a regular basis and then you, your community seeing you and then you show up for a listing appointment and you're interviewing against three other people, your chances of getting that have just like quadrupled. And if they didn't like you to begin with, they wouldn't be calling you because they've already developed a relationship with you. True. Yeah. It, it, every time. Um, yeah. it, that's why, that's why it's like everyone says become the digital mayor, become your local celebrity. Well, it's yeah. because you literally, that, that term's not just like pulled out of someone's butt. It, like it, literally that's what happens. Like you'll, you'll be walking down the street and you'll be like, you actually watch that. What? That's when, you know, it starts working and it actually happens a lot faster than most will think. Oh, um, do you, I have a question for you. Um, I see content creation in more rural areas work way faster. And people think and in busy then in cities and like busy, busy places with high populations. I have you seen that same thing? I have, but I will tell you this, that I think that no matter where you are or what you do or where you live, it works. It's just a matter of hundred percent. It totally does. Cause haven't you heard people say my city's too big. My city's too small. There's already a top producer. There's not a top producer. I mean, it's like you hear every excuse. It's just do it. It works. Yep. And it, and it doesn't, um, well, there's two opportunities, I think, now. Uh, one is that no one is doing it yet in your market, or the vast majority aren't, but they'll be forced to, trust me, there'll be a lot of people. And the other question we get a lot is like, well, hey, Mike, do you have anyone in my market doing this? I'm like, who cares if we had 50? There's only one of you. Yeah. You're not going to resonate with everybody the, the same way, just like I don't. There's like, you don't. Like, I don't. I have people, I'm sure, don't like me at all. Great. I'm human. Yeah, you know, that's just how it is, guys. You know, but you just have to <laughs> um, it, it, don't overthink it. It's it's that simple. And not only that, but ninety 
6% of people aren't going to do it consistently anyways, right? They're yeah. going to do it once a month and then you're not making the connection. It's about doing it consistently on a regular basis. And so don't worry about what anyone else is doing. Just worry about yourself and worry about, worry about doing it. And remember consistently and getting it out there correctly is more important than even creating, creating. If you're going to create a video and you're not going to properly distribute it via social media sites and all the things we talked about earlier, don't waste your time because nobody's seeing it. And it's getting harder and harder to actually be seen organically on these types of sites. Unless you, it just, it just is. Yep. I agree. So what do you want to leave us with Mike? Well, I would um, leave you with, are we at the end of the show here? And we're getting ready to do All right. it. Well, um, I think that this isn't a rocket science. I think right now there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for anyone in the real estate space. Um, what we're talking about isn't a real estate thing. It's in any business thing. It's virtually what every business does. You, you, you build an audience, but you only build an audience through content creation. So content creates awareness. Awareness creates conversations. Conversations creates trust. And then trust leads to you eventually getting hired. Um, it's farming with video content. And yes, you have to do it consistently. So it's the exact same process as direct mail farming. It's just video has, it's less expensive and it has a bigger impact because of the way communication is perceived. But if you understand the concept of farming, well, you understand how to do this. It's very simple. You do same audience over time. Just don't do it to a bunch of strangers because strangers don't refer you business. Uh, your friends, your family, your clients, people who know you do. Um, rinse and repeat, distribute your content. And it's really that simple. Um, I also think that um, personal branding is going to be the new, uh, it already is, but I don't think that an agent in the future, say five to 10 years from now will exist without one. Um, I don't don't think you could borrow your broker's brand and have a career anymore. You're going to have to make a name for yourself, regardless of whose uh, license you're hanging with uh, or what brokerage you're at. I love what you said earlier too about it's for any business. I got to tell you, so I'm, I just finished writing my fourth book and it's basically to local professionals because I, we've shown that this, this strategy works for everyone. How do you like the name? So we just today, we came up with it. So we're naming it, um, the ultimate lead gen playbook. Okay. Um, maximize profits and the, no, it's not that we changed it. Okay. The ultimate, um, lead gen playbook, take the guesswork out of marketing and maximize profit, something to that. And we're doing it to local for local professionals because this strategy works for anyone. It does. It, it, it really does. It's, it's honestly, it, it's you guys, when you guys, everyone has an agent in their market that we despise. And you're like that guy or gal, is she really, how do they do the business they do? Right. We know, you know what I'm talking about? Well, they're just more popular than you are. They're not better than you are. They just more people know what the hell they do over you. That's it. Doesn't mean you can't beat them. It just means that they have more attention than you do right now at this given time. So if you want to beat them, start creating attention. Stop chasing leads. He who markets the most wins. He who produces the most content will win. It's just there's no because you have more. Think about all the opportunity. I'm going to leave. I'm going to just leave with this. I want you to think about all the opportunities that you are missing because you're not properly distributing content on the multiple platforms. Think about how many opportunities you're listing. Is it one a month? What is one deal a month, which is 12 a year? These are opportunities that you're missing because you're not producing content. What is that costing you? For me, it's $144,000 a year just by, just by one a month. So the more that I can get my content out there and establish myself as the authority figure, the more that I'm going to have more opportunities to be able to make more money. And I don't want to lose them. Right. So I always ask everyone, Mike, if there's one tip that you can, how you doing, brother, that you can, that you can, this is my brother. I'm going to to say say hi. This is Goose. There was a. What's up, Goose? I'm the the more attractive one of the family. I just came here. Because she has chocolate. He's doing that. <laughs> it looks like a pervert. I always tell him to quit. You got the Movember thing going? Oh, God. It's my Movember. There you go. Nice. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you. It's my pervert. Um, so, I forgot. Oh, what is the one tip you want to leave people? What one tip or make sure they can get in contact with you? But I always say, what's the one yeah. tip? What would it be? Uh, the one tip is just, you got to do it. It's already here. Um, you know, if you don't, someone else is. And if you're not marketing your database, someone else is as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's the balls in your court. The only one's going to stop you from this is going to be yourself. So uh, my advice is just to do it. Do something. Do well, anything. Just do it. Thank you.
My email yeah. address is do it at kristamayshore.com. So I believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay. Well, Mike, you have been awesome. Um, remember, sweet. One more time. Sweet. Sweet assist is a software, but our main site, uh, because that is launching, is realestatemarketingdude.com. Realestatemarketingdude.com. So, and I will tell you, he speaks my language. I feel like I was talking to my twin on this on, <laughs> on this podcast. We absolutely have the same philosophies and beliefs because we know they work and we are doing them. So everyone, Mike, thank you so much for being on. I appreciate your time. I know you're busy. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun. You are a rock star. And everyone remember, it's great to learn, but if you don't take action and you don't implement, nothing's going to happen. And as always, make it a great day. When you do what you love, people love what you do. Hey there, I have a brand new podcast called Fired Up with Krista Mayshore, where I bring my high energy right to your ears. This podcast is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. So do me a favor, go subscribe and leave a review. All this information is free and I cannot wait to teach you everything I know. Thanks so much for watching my video. You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.